In primary school PE, a student with additional educational needs will usually have a written support plan, often called an Individual Education Programme, or IEP. And this is ideally developed by a multidisciplinary team consisting of the student, a parent or guardian and relevant school professionals. PE should be included within the student's IEP. However, this is not always the case, so you may need to emphasize the value and importance of physical education. The International Classification of Functioning, Disability and Health, developed by the World Health Organization, is a framework that helps to understand how someone's additional needs or disability will affect their participation. In physical activity and education, participation can be supported by combining knowledge of the student's functioning and other contextual factors with a definition or analysis of the task or learning outcomes. With this information, you and the team can make an informed decision on placement options for the student. From there, you can use an adaptation model to enable you to consider key variables of the task, which can be modified for inclusive participation. Let's take a look at each step in greater detail. Knowledge of functioning and contextual factors. Consultation and assessment take place to identify the student's present level of performance, or PLOP. There are various assessment tools that can be used. The results help identify the student's annual goals and short-term objectives to meet their individual needs and to facilitate participation and progress, emphasizing the content area to focus on and success criteria. Define the task. In each class, there are learning outcomes to be achieved. Defining the task in PE involves exploring ways for students with additional needs to achieve their learning outcomes. If there is an emphasis on specific movement skills, some students with additional needs may not have the ability to accomplish those skills. However, if you zoom out and consider that various sets of skills or techniques can achieve certain functional movements and psychomotor learning outcomes, there's a greater scope for inclusion by adapting the learning outcomes. Davis and Burton have developed a table of functional movement task categories and related movement skills. For example, let's take the functional movement task reception, which is to receive an object that is propelled from another student. Related skills can include grasping and catching. Student A, who has an amputation on one arm above the elbow, may use both arms, including the partial limb, and with a wide base, she may position herself using her body more in the catch. Student B, who has a lot of difficulty using both arms and uses a power chair due to muscular dystrophy, may position herself in such a way that she receives the ball on her lap or into a basket on her lap. Student C, who has no additional needs, may grasp the ball with both hands, facing the ball with a wide base. Placement options relate to the most appropriate setting within the least restrictive environment, considering a student's skills, abilities and available resources. Lauren Lieberman and her colleagues have developed a continuum of placement options in PE. Once the most appropriate placement is decided by the IEP team, there is another setting related tool for use within the classroom that allows you to structure each lesson to facilitate inclusion in a way that best suits the diverse needs of the students. This is the inclusion spectrum and it outlines five different yet overlapping settings within inclusive PE class. Open activities in which everyone participates, modified activities which are adapted for inclusion, separate or alternative activities, parallel groups according to ability, and disability sport, which gives students without disabilities an opportunity to participate in activities designed specifically for people with disabilities. Adaptation models are memory tools which outline variables of physical activities to be considered for modification for inclusive PE. The TREE model is commonly used. TREE is an acronym for teaching style, rules, equipment and environment. Let's look at a basic application of the TREE model to include a student with additional needs related to autism. T is for teaching style. The key is that instruction is understood. 
And an effective form of communication and instruction for many children with autism is visual cues like laminated cue cards supported by clear, concise verbal keywords. Or is for rules which may be simplified and then reintroduced as skill levels increase. There are many ways rules can be adapted. For example, in basketball, you may allow for more bounces and steps, or you could increase and decrease the number of players, or you could create tackle-free zones. E is for equipment. Again, in basketball, you could consider using various size, color, and texture of balls, and or you could use an adjustable height basket. If the student is sensitive to complex noise, like a noisy background, they may wear noise cancelling headphones and you could also use an alternative to a whistle. E is also for environment and this relates to the space and physical access. If the student is easily distracted, ensure there are no equipment lying around unnecessarily. If they are sensitive to boisterous activity, you may introduce playing zones to avoid players crowding. As you can see, the four overarching steps in this model aim to guide PE teachers through the process of including students with additional needs. These steps are signposts to inclusion rather than off-the-shelf solutions, and the specific details of each step will depend on the student with additional needs, all other students, and the available resources.